What if your eyes are not actually round? For one in three people, that's actually true. In this episode of OkiTalk, Dr. Rachel Rubel will be discussing astigmatism, what that means, how it affects your vision, and what options are available to patients. Dr. Rubel? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OkiTalk. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OkiTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. From Charlotte, North Carolina, Dr. Rachel Rubel. Dr. Rubel, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, I appreciate it. Well, thank you for joining us, Dr. Rubel. Uh, we know you're very busy, so thank you for taking the time out of your day to visit with us. Uh, before we get started, Dr. Rubel, uh, we were hoping maybe you can let us know a little bit about your background and your specialty to our viewers. Absolutely. So I graduated from the Michigan College of Optometry in 2009, uh, completed a residency in ocular disease and specialty contact lenses at the um, W.A. Hefner VA Hospital in Salisbury, North Carolina. And from there, I have been practicing medical optometry. I currently co-own five practices uh, between Charlotte and Asheville, North Carolina. Um, and I look forward to talking with you guys today. Well, amazing. Thank you for that intro and co-owning five businesses. That's amazing. <laughs> Again, thank you for joining us today, Dr. Rubel. Uh, so for our discussion today, we were kind of hoping you can talk to us a little bit about astigmatism. What exactly is astigmatism? Oh, good question there. And that's, I'm excited to talk to you about it. We hear the word astigmatism all the time. Some patients even tell me they have stigmatism, but there is an A in front of it. Astigmatism, it's a condition in which your cornea of the eye is uneven or not, you know, perfectly round, causing a blurring of the vision, whether it be distance or near. Well, perfect. Thank you for that explanation, Dr. Rubel. And so what causes it to happen, actually? Well, an astigmatism is often hereditary, which means it's passed down from your parents. So I always tell patients, you can thank your parents for giving that to you. But it occurs when the curvature of the cornea, which is the front surface of the eye that you can touch, is not perfectly spherical in shape. I always explain it to my patients as the front of the eye is more oval shaped like a football as compared to a round basketball. And other things that can cause it, it can be a result of your eyelids putting pressure on the cornea um, over time. It can get better or worse. And sometimes it can happen from like an eye injury or surgery or trauma. Um, and there's conditions like keratoconus where your cornea, the front surface of your eye can become thinner and bulge out a little bit. And that can create an astigmatism as well. Well, perfect. Again, thank you for that explanation, Dr. Rubel, and thank you for the visuals. That was pretty amazing. Uh, Dr. Rubel, are there different types of astigmatism that we should know about? Yes, there are different types. So we'll talk about myopic, hyperopic, and mixed astigmatism. So some patients go, you know, I wear a contact lens that's a minus two, and it'll be just one number. Well, that's a spherical prescription, meaning your whole cornea is probably the same prescription all the way around. A myopic astigmatism is when cut your cornea in half. One of those halves may be one prescription, and then the other half is a different prescription. So you may be someone that wears astigmatism glasses or contact lenses that have multiple numbers because your prescription is different in different meridians. And that goes with a hyperopic astigmatism where you may be farsighted in both meridians, or a mixed astigmatism where you have one meridian is nearsighted and one meridian is farsighted. Oh, well, excellent. Thank you for that explanation, uh, Dr. Rubel. And so how common is astigmatism? And do you see it more in like children or, or adults? Is there, is, there, is, is there a big difference between there? Astigmatism, it's a pretty common refractive error, actually. It occurs in one in three people, so 33% of the population. And actually, astigmatism is actually present at birth. It can develop later um, throughout life, but it's usually at birth and some babies will grow out of it and some will um, keep that over time where the eye doctors will see that astigmatism and correct it. But it most often occurs with uh, myopia and hyperopia patients. Well, perfect. Thank you again for that explanation, Dr. Rubel. And uh, so what are the signs and symptoms that we should be on the lookout for to alert us of, of this condition? 
astigmatism, it, because we've got a different curvature of the shape of the eye not being perfectly spherical, we may have distorted or blurred vision at distance or near. Patients may experience eye strain or discomfort, even headaches um, between the eyes or on, along the forehead. They may have difficulty with night vision, even complaining of glare or halos off of headlights, and maybe a squinting, and as they squint, their vision gets becomes more clear. Well, again, thank you for that explanation, Dr. Rule. We appreciate that. And so what tests are available to diagnose the condition? You definitely want to reach out and see your eye care professional because it's diagnosed during an eye exam. A complete eye exam involves multiple tests where you usually will meet with a uh, technician or someone in your pre-test room prior to do uh, testing like an auto refraction, where you may look at a hot air balloon um, in the machine and it may be clear and blurry. Eventually you'll see the doctor and they're able to do a refraction and to determine what your prescription is. So the doctor will determine with various instruments how light goes directly through your eyes to see if it bends. And from there, they can determine if you have an astigmatism. Perfect. Again, thank you for that explanation, Dr. Rubel. And um, so what are the different treatment options that are available? And I, I know you said earlier that, you know, some uh, babies are born with it and they, they can get out of it eventually. But can, can it be something that can be corrected? multiple um, options right now for patients with an astigmatism. The most common being eyeglasses. They're made with lenses that help compensate for the uneven shape of our eye. The lenses make the light bend into the eye properly so that you can see more clearly and have less glare and halos. And that works for both nearsightedness and farsightedness. Other than eyeglasses, contact lenses are an option. I've heard from so many patients over the years that because of their astigmatism, they were told they're not a candidate for contact lenses. But there are so many options out there with soft contact lenses that have an astigmatism and hard contact lenses, ones that you may wear during the day to correct your astigmatism, or even now they make ones that you can wear at bedtime to reshape your eye as you sleep at night and you take them out in the morning and you can see clearly all day. And actually, that's actually what I wear. I wear the lenses that you can sleep in at night to correct my astigmatism. Um, other options are refractive surgery. And so I love to talk to patients about that because some want other options versus contacts or glasses. So their LASIK surgery and different types of refractive surgeries are available for astigmatism patients. The most um, recent one is called SMILE. It's small incision lenticular extraction. It's a newer type, just been around a couple years, that reshapes the cornea by using a laser to make a lens-shaped bit of tissue below the cornea surface, that front surface of the eye. And then the lenticule is removed through a very small incision. Again, we're reshaping the eye to treat that astigmatism. Well, that, that definitely is excellent information. Thank you again, Dr. Rubel, for that information. Uh, Dr. Rubel, I, I've always been curious, uh, and I'm sure our viewers have been too, but can you tell us the difference between astigmatism and nearsightedness and, and farsightedness? Yes. Patients often get those mixed up, and, and rightfully so. They can be confusing. All three of these, astigmatism, nearsightedness, and farsightedness, are refractive errors that can cause blurred or distorted vision but they actually differ, um, which are related to the shape of the cornea and the length of the eyeball. So we were talking about an astigmatism that occurs when the cornea, that front, sur first, excuse me, front surface of the eye is non-spherical or non-basketball shape. But then you have myopia, which is nearsightedness. So patients always think nearsightedness. That means you can see up close, but you have trouble seeing far away. And that occurs when the cornea power is too high and our length of our eyeball is actually longer than average. So it takes more light to reach the back of our eyeball. And then hyperopia has to do with farsightedness. Farsightedness means you can see far, but you may have more trouble seeing up close. And that's when the cornea power of the front surface of our eye is too weak or the length of the eyeball is too short meaning the light focuses behind the retina instead of directly on it. Well, perfect. Thank you for that explanation, Dr. Rubel. I, I appreciate that. Now I kind of understand the difference. Um, 
So Dr. Rubel, are, are there any long-term side effects that are associated with astigmatism? Well, it depends on the shape of your cornea, how much astigmatism you have. You have. If left untreated, it can cause complications. For example, if you have someone that has like a lazy eye, we'll call it, or amblyopic eye, they may have been diagnosed with, that has an astigmatism. If we don't correct it, it actually can become more worse over time, really kind of shutting the vision off in that eye eventually. So sometimes that can cause eye strain and headaches. So in many cases, it is important to correct that astigmatism to make sure both eyes are working together. Well, excellent. Thank you again for that information, Dr. Rubel. We appreciate that. And uh, does astigmatism get worse as people age? And uh, can it return once it's been treated? It's a good question there. So the rate of astigmatism can increase from roughly about 14% in around 15 years old and under to 67% in an age group over 65 years old. And that can be occurring because our shape of our eye is changing throughout of our lifetime. And once it is treated, say you have wear contact lenses or you have LASIK surgery, with contact lenses, your astigmatism will always be there. If you have a refractive laser correction surgery, the astigmatism, if it gets fully corrected, may be gone for many years, it can return, but maybe not to the full extent that it once was. So we do educate patients that, you know, some refractive surgeries are not permanent. They don't last forever, but we typically don't see it come back to where you were starting at. Gotcha. Excellent information there, Dr. Rubel. Again, thank you very much. And Dr. Rubel, before we leave today, was there anything else that you'd like to tell our audience about? Hey, you know, with an astigmatism, it sounds like a scary diagnosis. And I tell patients, you know, oh, you have an astigmatism. But then I, I followed up very quickly. It's okay. It's a very common refractive error that many of my patients have. And some patients have a basketball shaped eye and a football shaped eye, and that's okay. We have options to correct it. So I continually like to monitor any updates in treatment options that are available to make sure my patients have the best options out there. Well, awesome. Again, thank you for that information, Dr. Rubel. And everyone, that was Dr. Rachel Rubel from Charlotte, North Carolina. Dr. Rubel, thank you for taking the time out of your day to visit with us. Thank you. I do appreciate it.